so another very important topic which we want to discuss today is regarding sutures and knots right so first i'll talk start with knotting techniques and then we'll talk about individual sutures later on okay so when i talk about knots i want to demonstrate the basic knotting techniques to you and the questions which have been asked in the exam so to go over the knots with you i'm just going to demonstrate these knots so that you understand how they are uh, put when we are actually doing surgery so the first knot which i'm going to talk about is the simplest knot also known as the square knot okay now before i start i want to i want you to appreciate that i have a thread this thread has two knots on one side and it is plain on the other side okay i'll i'll tell you the reason why i'm telling you this now to make a square knot we first need to give a square throw so what am i going to do i'm going to cross that means if this end which had two knots on one side this end is going to come towards me and the other end is going to go on the other side right now this is a square throw now if i put one more square throw on top of this this becomes a reef knot or a square knot okay so you have we started with these two knots on one side and they it has come back because we've crossed it twice so if you cross then it is known as a square knot or a reef knot and it is a secure knot you can't open it easily now look carefully the other one is a granny's knot so this is the end which has two knots on one side this is the plain end now see what i am doing i am going to give a throw but i am not crossing okay i am not crossing that means the end with the two knots is on the same side again look again i give a throw again i don't cross again i give a throw again i don't cross so if i don't cross then i give rise to a granny's knot and a granny's knot tends to open easily it is also known as a slip knot it slips out and it can open up easily right so you must have all worn sweaters during winters and you must have seen that if the last knot of the sweater opens up the entire line opens up that's because all grannies use the granny's knot which is insecure now coming to the next knot this is a surgeon's knot so look carefully this is the end with two knots now i am going to cross once in the same go cross one more time so again look cross once cross one more time so i've crossed two times in the first go and then i cross a single time so a surgeon's knot is a secure knot and it doesn't open easily so i've told you about knots now we need to know about skin suturing so please remember that whenever we talk about skin suturing we always need to have everted edges you need everted edges and the simplest skin suture is a simple suture so look at this now this is a laceration okay this is a skin laceration now if i take my needle this is the needle if i take the needle and i pass it towards the other side okay so i take it from one side pass it towards the other side and if i tie the knot this is a simple suture okay so this is what a simple suture looks like now whenever you're taking simple sutures in the skin please remember that if x is the depth of the wound okay you need to take the distance between two sutures should be 2x and the distance from the wound edge should be x on each side so this is a direct image out of bailey which is very important for the exam now the problem is that all of you must have faced this if you've taken sutures that if you take sutures sometimes the skin edge becomes inverted now if the skin edge becomes inverted skin is not going to heal so in that case we need to take mattress sutures so these are the two types of mattress 
sutures which are there. So I'll just demonstrate mattress sutures to you. This is our laceration. Okay, this was our laceration. Now what do I do? I take my needle. I go towards the other side. Okay, I've gone towards the other side. Now my needle is here. Now what do I do? I'm going to bring back my needle adjacent to this bite at the same depth. Okay, so look carefully. I've got my needle back adjacent to the previous bite at the same depth. Fine. So now look here. Now both the threads are on the same side. If I tie this, this becomes a horizontal mattress suture. This becomes a horizontal mattress suture. And what are the advantages of a horizontal mattress suture? They help in eversion of the skin edge and they are hemostatic as well. So eversion of the skin edge and hemostatic. The other one is a vertical mattress. So let's look at it. This is my laceration. Now vertical mattress, what do I do? I take my needle and I go deep. Now you can see that I've gone deep towards the other side. Now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come back superficially, but in the same line, right? So now you can see it's one on top of the other. We go deep, but we come back superficially. Okay. So you can look here in this image as well that we go deep, but we come back superficially. This is a vertical mattress suture and this also helps in eversion of the skin edge. Now one more thing which I want to demonstrate to you is that sometimes if you've taken sutures, supposing you take a suture, what happens that after a few days when you open the suture, it has cut through the skin, right? The suture cuts through the skin edge. So in one of the exams, they asked that out of these three suturing techniques, which one has the least cut through rate? And the least cut through rate is for a horizontal mattress suture. The least cut through rate is for a horizontal mattress suture. Few more suturing techniques which you should remember for the exam. This is subcuticular suturing. You can see that sutures are being taken from the inside only. There is no mark on the skin, no mark on the skin. So this is cosmetically better. And in the AIMS exam, they had asked which is the best suture material for subcuticular sutures. 3-0 monocryl is the best suture material for subcuticular sutures. This on the other hand is an Aberdeen's knot. This is an Aberdeen's knot. And Aberdeen's knot is the correct way of tying a continuous suture. It is the correct way of tying a continuous suture. This is how you tie it using an Aberdeen's knot. So this is what you use if you're closing the rectus sheath at the end of the rectus sheath closure. You will use an Aberdeen's knot. Also known as a cobbler's knot if you've ever seen a cobbler fixing your shoes or your sandals.